Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another episode of the Nap Bros Podcast. If this is your first time being here, welcome. I'm sorry. This podcast is probably not for you. This is generally a podcast that me and my brother host right now, and we are going through the fantasy football season. It might be interesting to you. It may not be. We don't really care right now. Later on, after the fantasy football season is over, then we'll end up doing other things that might be interesting to you. But welcome in if this is your first time being here. Um, if you're on YouTube, just click the subscribe button, leave us a like, um, click the bell. Also, that way you can be notified. If you're listening on a podcasting app, click the subscribe button, leave us a five-star review. Anyway, without any further ado, this is week 14 reaction to what has happened in our fantasy football league in the chat town fantasy football league. And that being said, it's the playoffs, baby. What we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to, I'm going to give you the current standings, who's in the playoffs, who's in the consolation bracket, talk about average difference of points as usual, and then go over the matchups. Unfortunately, this week I didn't, I wasn't able to break down the matchups by points. COVID got me uh, on Monday and I have been suffering ever since, but I feel better now, uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm recording and Andrew is not here because when we were supposed to record... <coughs> I was not feeling good, and he was feeling right as rain. Uh, that being said, um, then we're going to get into the playoff breakdown and talk about the matchups that are in our league. Uh, we're going to talk about the constellation bracket as well. Then we're going to talk about a uh, couple of things that that you guys wanted to hear. One, we're going to talk about, or I'm, I guess I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about if the playoffs or if the rankings were based on how many points you had. Then, actually, I took it one step further, and I took it over the past four four weeks, the highest points, if we, if we did it based on the points for the last four weeks. Um, after that, I'm going to talk about potential players who could get or, – or potential teams who could sit their people or when they would sit their players um, in the NFL playoffs or in the NFL um, coming weeks. That being said, uh, after that, I'm going to give you – Andrews and my picks for the games this weekend, and then we will call it done. We will call it finished. Everything will be done. It will be over until next week, okay? So without any further ado, let me scroll back up on my handy-dandy worksheet and uh, talk to you guys through this. Current standings, moving up into first place with a victory over London Sillinese, is Heartbeat. Um, Heartbeat is at the top 10 and 4. With London Silly Nannies close behind, also at 10 and 4, just less points by a lot. Um, in third place, better than Scott, holding true. Uh, moving up one position, you're surely back in the hot seat to number four uh, at 9 and 5. Um, better than Scott is also at 9 and 5. Sorry, I should have said that. Uh, Andrew, don't take the Bateman. Uh, moving down into fifth position at 8 and 6. And the Marvel Universe sneaking into the playoffs with a loss but enough points to be in sixth place. Then we have, in seventh place, Shroot Farms, also at seven and seven. The Water Boys in eighth place, also at seven and seven. Scott's Tots at five and nine. Biggest Loser at five and nine. Let's Ride at four and ten. And then the Leprechauns back on the losing streak uh, at three and eleven. So that is the end of the regular season. And so uh, with that, um, our week 14 average difference of points was 22.24. So again, just kind of hovering around that 20-point area. Nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing too out there. Um, again, like I said, I couldn't, couldn't get the useful pe points on the bench. Uh, just COVID got me. And so uh, I'll just talk about the matchups um, that, that happened last week. So um, Yours truly, I beat my brother. Uh, I would have loved for him to have been here today to be able to talk about how much he sucks at this game called fantasy football uh, and be able to rub it in. But I can only do it now uh, without any uh, discourse from him, without any uh, rebuttals from him, which is great. Uh, that's how I like my arguments. No rebuttals. It's great. So uh, I'm the best, and there's nothing he can say about it. Um, that being said, I did beat him 111.06 to 90.28. Uh, Scott's Tots lost to Shroot Farms. Shroot Farms had 110.08 points. Scott's Tots had 58, which is the biggest blowout of the week. Better than Scott beat Let's Ride 106.66 to 
Biggest Loser beat the Marvel Universe, 94.52 to 76.46. It wasn't for a lack of trying to get out of the playoffs that the Marvel, you know, was dealing with, but he ended up sneaking in anyway. Um, that being said, Heartbeat did take down London Silly Nannies, uh, 91.68 to 84.68, which was the closest uh, matchup. Not terribly close. I mean, it was, what is that? That's at seven points exactly. And uh, the Leprechauns lost to the Water Boys, 84.06 to 62.20. So let's get into the playoff breakdown. Uh, with Heartbeat uh, taking the number one spot, that means that <coughs> he will then play um, whoever is the lowest remaining seed. Uh, so we'll talk about potentially what he would want to have happen, what Heartbeat needs to happen in order to potentially get to the championship and potentially win the championship. We'll talk about some of those things. Um, we won't go too much into detail, not until next week when this week's playoffs have kind of like mellowed out and we kind of see how things have played out. Um, London Silly Nannies will take the, the highest seed left. Uh, so being in second place means that he gets the highest seed left. So, Without any further ado, let's break down the matchups that are being played right now in the playoffs. So, um, with the hot seat versus don't take the Bateman, um, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, this is this is it. Kind of sucks because it's it's brothers. I mean, I would love to. I would love to have played Andrew in the championship round. However, uh, gotta gotta be the first round in the playoffs. So. Um, Good luck to both of us, I guess. Um, except obviously not not him because I have to play against him and I want to win. Obviously, uh, my goal is the championship. But other than that, other than that, uh, talk to you about the uh, matchups. Um, so I was originally going to play Mike White. I did play put Mike White in as my quarterback um, because of the fact that he's got a great matchup against Detroit. However, as of yesterday, before this recording. Um, he is out, and so that means Zach Wilson is in, and so that means I am going to play some other person. I did not play Geno Smith because going against San Francisco, not a great choice. Um, we'll see if that pans out. Um, he does have Jalen Hurts, and so no matter who I end up playing, unless they have an amazing game and just blow it out of the water, surprisingly, uh, I don't think I take the cake on that. That being said, uh, I think Garrett Wilson and Mike Evans are a wash. Um, my Devonta Smith over his Jalen Waddle again, I think also a wash, <coughs> but my Christian McCaffrey, I'm going to say Christian McCaffrey versus Josh Jacobs. Um, again, if Josh Jacobs goes off against new England, which he could, uh, if that happens, then, um, you know, obviously you got to give it to Josh Jacobs because he's just one of the greatest running backs this season. Um, however, my Jonathan Taylor over his Latavius Murray all day. Um, I am playing currently Jeff Driscoll at tight end, uh, even though he's a quarterback technically in Houston. And that's partially because I would like to get some quarterback points in my tight end position. And hearing that Houston is playing him 50, 50 with Davis Mills might be a great opportunity for him. Uh, Andrew's got Gerald Everett who should have a pretty good day against the Tennessee Titans. Um, I have Isaiah, Isaiah Pacheco, um, he has James Conner. I think James Conner uh, – James Conner is going to have a rough go of it in Denver. So still put up some points. Um, however, my Christian Watson over his Cordero Patterson, I think that that it's it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be close. There's going to be a lot um, a lot that can happen. Um, but I am excited to see what happens. Um, obviously, if I win, then, you know, it's great. Uh, if I lose, then obviously I'm rooting for him to uh, continue on. Um, so looking at Nathan and uh, Jacob's matchup <coughs> with uh, better than better than Scott and LaMarvel, um, Nathan has Joe Burrow. Um, Jacob has Ryan Tannehill. So uh, definitely Joe Burrow is going to take that. Then A.J. Brown and Stephon Diggs, that one I feel like is a wash. I feel like both of them are superior talents, great talents. Uh, Chris Olave and Amon Ross St. Brown, 
man, Amon Ra might have a, a massive game. Uh, but then again, the Jets have been doing a lot better against wide receivers, so that could turn into not such a great game for Amon Ra, so maybe a wash. But then you have Derrick Henry and Joe Mixon. <clears throat> Derrick Henry, I think, is going to do better and score more than uh, Joe Mixon. But then you have Aaron Jones and Travis Etienne, so I think Aaron Jones will be better than Travis Etienne. Uh, Dawson Knox and Tyler Higby. <clears throat> We'll say a wash there. Um, I think Brandon Ayuk, uh, I forget how many points he has now. I, I didn't check that. But Tony Pollard against Jacksonville, I think, will have a pretty good game. And then Alvin Kamara, it really depends on on whether he shows up. But I definitely think he's better than Marquez valdez Scanling. Uh, so it would be difficult to see. It would be weird to see Nathan lose this one because of the fact that uh, he has such a high-powered um, – group nevertheless uh it could happen but i don't know jacob's been bleeding points and been bleeding games uh and just again like limping into the playoffs is is never a place where you want to be um also really quick just a message directly to jacob jacob i don't know why <coughs> i don't know why you didn't put the um Brandon Ayuk, your flex, the guy that, that that started on Thursday, I don't know why you didn't put him into your wide receiver position. You should do that because that way you have more flexibility in your actual flex positions in case any other craziness happens. Because uh, if you don't do that, so like right now, oh no, I guess I guess you've got uh, Amon Ra and Marquez Valdez Scantling, but but the thing is is, um, let's say if Amon Ra has some problems, then you know, the unfortunate thing is that he's in your wide receiver, wide receiver position and you're not able to adjust to a running back or a wide receiver. You have to go, or a tight end even, you have to go with a wide receiver regardless. And so that's part of the reason why you want to move your flex players into the starting position if they if they have an earlier game. What Trent wants is Trent wants Jacob to win. So Harvey wants the Marvel to win because what that means is that means there's an easier path to the championship. Because <clears throat> next round, if if um, because going against either me or Andrew could be a challenge, not not a big challenge. Not saying that heartbeat uh, or that Trent has uh, anything to really be afraid of per se, but a little bit. Okay, and so to make it a little bit easier on him, it would be a good thing, actually. Because of how my team, my team personally has been scoring over the past four weeks, he definitely would prefer <coughs> Lamarvel to win or Andrew to win. One of the either either Jacob or Andrew to win versus me or uh, Nathan. But yeah, um, for Jesse, Jesse uh, London Silly Nannies, he would love for Lamarvel to win and for Andrew to win because that would just make it. Uh, uh, much easier for for him to be able to get into the playoffs. Because uh, then if LaMarvel wins, then he doesn't have to go up against um, better than Scott. He doesn't have to go up against Nathan. And so that means that he either gets me or uh, Andrew. And he would prefer it be Andrew, probably. Just saying, again, I know I know it sounds like since this, is, since this is my podcast, I'm like, oh, I've got a great team. My team is phenomenal. It's amazing. It's not that. I'm just looking at the stats. That's that's all I am. I promise you. That's all I'm looking at right now. Constellation bracket. Okay. And then we'll get into um, how the playoffs could have been different if we did it based on points. Constellation bracket. So Shoot Farms gets seventh place. And so that means that he gets the lowest seed, whoever wins in, in, in this week's games. Water Boys gets the next highest or it gets the highest that's left. So. <clears throat> Scott's co- Scott's Tots versus the Leprechauns. Um, Scott's Tots has two attack of Iowa. I think he'll have a hard day against Buffalo. Um, but I think Jared Goff will also have a difficult day against uh, the Jets secondary. So I would say a wash there. Uh, Terry McLaurin and Devonta Adams. Give me Devonta Adams on the Leprechauns. Uh, Mari Cooper versus T. Higgins. Wash. Uh, Kenneth Walker, I don't think he scored as many points as, as you would have wanted. 
Uh, but against Dalvin Cook, even even so, I'll take Dalvin Cook, uh, especially against Indianapolis. Um, J.K. Dobbins uh, and A.J. Dillon. Ooh. Give me A.J. Dillon because it's against the Rams. Um, <coughs> so I'll take I'll take A.J. Dillon on that. David Njoku versus uh, Tyler Conklin. Give me David Njoku. Uh, I think he'll have a pretty good day against Baltimore. Um, Jamal Williams. Over Darius Slayton. Uh that one to me is a wash because I don't I, I think a lot of the work is going to DeAndre Swift. Uh Jamal Williams at a time was great. But now he's just kind of like, eh. Uh Deonta Foreman. Yeah, give me Deonta Foreman over Nico Collins. Um, so Michael, just a suggestion. Get Nico Collins out of there. Uh, maybe put in Samaji Pre Ryan or even Dallas Goddard. Uh oh no, 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 no. He's well, he might he might be available. Yeah. Oh yeah, he should be back. He could be back. Yeah. So even like Dallas Goddard, Goddard could be good uh, instead of Nico Collins. I, I don't think uh, Nico Collins may not be playing. So just a suggestion. Um. Anyway, biggest loser uh, versus Let's Ride. So Adam versus Ryan. Adam has Trevor Lawrence. Ryan has Kirk Cousins. Yeah, give me Kirk Cousins because I think I think against Indianapolis it'll, it'll be better. Like that Dallas defense is something to be scared of. Um, Michael Pittman Jr. or Tyree Hill? I'll take Tyree Hill as long as he's healthy. Um, Mac Hollins versus Jerry Judy. I feel like that's a wash. Um, Jerry Judy might have an okay day depending on how Russell Wilson does against Arizona. Austin Eckler over Najee Harris all day, every day. Yes, please. Uh, the same with Ezekiel Elliott and uh, Leonard Fournette. I think Zeke will have a great day as well. I think Zeke and Tony will have a great day uh, against Jacksonville. Uh, Cole Komet and George Kittle. I mean, George Kittle, we already saw he had an amazing night um, a couple nights ago. And so, yeah, I kind of got to give it to him. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster or Dalton Schultz. Uh yeah, I mean, it's, I'd probably give it to Juju. Um, Dalton might – well, no, but that's Houston. Ooh, that might uh, – it might be Dalton. I might have to give it to Dalton because because uh, I just – Houston Houston doesn't need to be – there's no – like wide receivers don't need to do well against Houston. <coughs> also, Adam, please bench Daryl Henderson Jr. He is not playing. Please bench him, okay? Please put in somebody who is actually playing. Noah Brown, Jah- uh, <clears throat> Justin Watson might even get you more points. Robert Tanyan, anybody besides uh, Daryl Henderson, please. Oh, Marquise Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play him. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, if if Daryl Henderson Jr. is still in there, then I will take Brian Robinson over him. Uh, I'll take I'll take Ryan's Brian Robinson over him. All right. Um, so, if – the playoffs were based on points alone and not actually based on records. <clears throat> Here's what would happen for the whole season. And I think I, I, I I'll tell you this. Nathan's the one who came up with this. Yeah, I think it was Nathan. I think Nathan. Yeah. 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 Cause Nathan kind of likes his position if it were based on points. So pretty sure Nathan's the one who recommended this. So at the top, what it would have been, it so would have been heartbeat uh, with 1600, Point eight four points. Then it would have been Nathan, better than Scott, with <coughs> fifteen hundred and six points. Then it would have been Jacob, Marvel Universe, with fourteen hundred and one points. And what that what that means is basically the Marvel was blowing people out of the water at the beginning, and it's tapered off quite a bit. Uh, after that, it would be Don't Take the Bateman with thirteen hundred and seventy one. So Andrew's team, <clears throat> then it'll be my team back in the hot seat at with 1,336.46 points. Hold on. Because in seventh place, in sixth place, <clears throat> will be Shrew Farms. So Cody's team with 1,336.32 points. So I only had 0.14 points more than he has. Um, then it would have been uh, – Jesse, Lennon Silly Nannies with 1310. And then Scott, Scott's Tots, 
Then the Leprechauns actually would have been in ninth place. So Michael. Then the Water Boys. Matt would have been in would have been in tenth place. Biggest loser. Adam would have been in eleventh place, and then Ryan, let's ride, would have been in twelfth place with a balmy one thousand one hundred and forty nine points. I took it one step further because I was like, I was curious. I wanted to see. Let's let's take a look at the past four weeks. Let's just look at the past four weeks. How many points there were? Uh, I originally went back to week eleven, but I actually needed to go back to week ten in order to get four weeks of points to figure out who, if we did it based on the past four weeks, who seems to be kind of like increasing and, and, and getting more points or getting better. Uh, and also like if, if the playoffs were based on those points just for the past four weeks. So but with that, in the number one spot, me, back in the hot seat with 450.3 points. So, so my team has scored on average, I guess that's 112.5 points per week on average. Um, in second place, Heartbeat. Not really a surprise there. So uh, just because Trent's team is doing really well. So with four, 437.3 points. Uh, after that, Shoot Farms. So Cody's team at 428.54 points. Then Nathan's team uh, in fourth place with 411.16. That's better than Scott. Andrew's team, don't take the Bateman, with 403.4 points. Then, surprisingly, the Leprechauns uh, in sixth place with 387.76. So, so Michael's team doing really well uh, the past four weeks. Uh, the Water Boys in seventh place with 100 and – oh, sorry. With 347.62. So, nicely done, Matt. Then London Silly Nanny. So, Jesse's team uh, in eighth place with 345.5 points. Then we've got the Biggest Loser. So Adam's team um, with 332.68 points. The Marvel Universe, so Jacob at 329.22 points. Uh, Let's Ride, so Ryan's team at 325.5 points. And Scott at the bottom of the barrel with 322.3 points over the past four weeks. So um, just kind of something interesting to think about and also to anticipate. But I'm kind of happy to see that I'm at the top of the pack. Yay! Anyway, moving on. Um, so teams that you need to pay attention to uh, that, that could bench their players if they get into the playoffs. So first off, the Eagles and the 49ers are in the playoffs. Guaranteed, no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Um, <clears throat> and then after this week, it should be a little bit clearer um, how the playoffs are going to pan out for the NFL. Um, but in Week 17, so looking at this, if the Eagles – beat Chicago, which I assume they will. And if they beat Dallas, which is going to be a challenge, is definitely Dallas is definitely playing very well uh, these days. And so being being a divisional opponent, it could be a challenge for the Eagles to win. But if they win both of those games, expect that the Eagles will start benching their players um, in Week 17. So, so don't be surprised if uh, your Jalen Hurts or your A.J. Brown or your Miles Sanders or your even my Devonta Smith, um, if they get benched uh, in the championship game. So, uh, but over like this week and next week, I don't see that happening, mainly because um, they are tied or they're, they're, they're only, they're only two games. Well, basically it would have to be Minnesota would have to get two more wins as well. Uh, to to challenge them, um, but all they have to do is win two more games. They're, they'll be fourteen and one, and then they won't really have to worry about home field advantage. They'll have it uh, throughout the playoffs. Yeah, the Cowboys, the Vikings, and the 49ers could ruin their bid for uh, the one seed, but it's unlikely um, because a lot they, like the Eagles seem to have a pretty good track on on being able to get the one seed. Um, the Bills and the Chiefs will probably actually end up playing their guys even in a week 17, probably just resting them in week 18, uh, just because they're both going after the one seed. Okay. <clears throat> right now they're neck and neck at 10 and 3, and they'll probably be 11 and 3 at the end of this uh, weekend. Uh, the Bills have a little bit more of a challenge against Miami. Um, the Chiefs have almost an easy slate against Houston. And so um, that being said, 
don't I wouldn't be surprised if both of them are eleven and three at the end of this week, and if they're continuing to play their players even into the uh, even into week seventeen. Um, so yeah, uh, the Bills do clinch playoffs if they win. The Chiefs also clinch playoffs if they win. The Cowboys clinch playoffs if they win, and the Vikings clinch the playoffs if they win or tie. Um, so be paying attention to those teams. So the Eagles, the 49ers, the Cowboys, the Vikings, the Chiefs, and the Bills are the six teams that you really want to pay attention to. The Eagles are the only ones that I see benching their players anytime soon, um, but definitely not this week. So, so no worries necessarily there. The games for this weekend. The Indianapolis Colts travel to the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are four-point favorites. Uh, This is on Saturday, actually, uh, shortly after this gets released. Um, So uh, the Vikings are four-point favorites. Uh, Both Andrew and I have the Vikings. I don't see how the Colts at four and eight are going to be able to do much of anything uh, to the Vikings. Uh, They did give the Chiefs uh, a loss, but... Um, and possibly even the Bills, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the Colts can play very well. Um, but that being said, um, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I really hope Jonathan Taylor runs a lot, but that's just because I want to win my matchup. Anyway, Baltimore Ravens uh, travel to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, the ba- Baltimore Ravens are 9-4. The Browns are 5-8. and eight. The Browns are actually 2.5 favorites. Um, and Andrew has taken the Ravens. I have taken the Browns. Um, the reason I've taken the Browns is because they still don't have Lamar, <coughs> and I think Lamar gives them the best chance. Um, I think that Sean Watson, this will be his third week starting for the Browns. I think he will have some things figured out. Could be totally wrong, obviously. Um, but, I mean, it is Deshaun Watson, and I wouldn't be surprised if they actually started, like, going off. Um, the last game, uh, Saturday night, Miami Dolphins at the Buffalo Bills. Uh, the Bills are 7.5 favorites, and Andrew and I both have the Bills winning that game. I just don't see it really being much of a – besides that, it's a divisional game. I don't think the Bills will cover 7.5, but um, Jalen Waddles dealing with injury. Tyreek Hill may be j- dealing with injury. Um, I don't – Think, I mean, the Bills' defense isn't as great as it was, but I, I, you know, I think they, they figure they find ways to win, and so I think that, that will happen again uh, this week. Um, for the Sunday games, Detroit Lions travel to the New York Jets. Uh, the Jets are one point favorites. Originally, I did choose the Jets, but now with uh, now with Zach Wilson, I, I don't think I don't think the Jets will be able to do. Um, Actually, I'm gonna, Andrew said he chooses, chooses the Jets, but he may change his mind. I'm going to give Andrew a pass on this one if he wants to. He says the Jets, but I'm going to give him a pass on this one just in case. I'm going to take the Lions uh, just with the development that Mike White is out and Zach Wilson is in. I'll take the Detroit Lions all day, every day with that. But I don't, Zach Wilson is a terrible quarterback. Just god awful. Um, the Dallas Cowboys travel to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are five-point underdogs. So the Cowboys are five-point favorites. I don't understand why that's not a little bit higher. I guess it's just because the Jacksonville Jaguars did just beat my Tennessee Titans, unfortunately. Um, But we both take the Cowboys. Uh, I think that the Cowboys will have a field day in Jacksonville with Jacksonville. Then you have the Atlanta Falcons traveling to the New Orleans Saints. The New Orleans Saints are four-point favorites. My brother has chosen the Falcons. Uh, Why, I don't know. Um... I have taken the Saints. I think the Saints will win. Uh, I think – I really hope that that Andy Dalton figures things out with Chris Olave and uh, Alvin Kamara uh, just because I do have them in another league. Um, although I'm pretty sure whoever has them in this league is in the playoffs. So maybe maybe it would be okay if they – no, I, I got money in the other league. I kind of care a little bit more about that league. But not, not to say I don't care about this league. I care about this league for bragging rights. But that league, I got some money in it. So that one's the one that I'm a little bit more like, eh. So uh, I am picking the Saints to win that one. <coughs> um, the Philadelphia Eagles uh, travel to Chicago to take on the Bears. The Eagles are 8.5 favorites uh, against the Bears. And both Andrew and I are taking the Eagles. Um, I just don't see how 
the Bears are going to do anything. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Uh, Andrew has chosen the Steelers. I have chosen the Panthers. Um, I think that the, the Panthers are 2.5 favorites. That's not the reason I chose them. I just think uh, the Steelers don't really have much going for them. Uh, the Panthers seem to be putting stuff together in Christian McCaffrey's absence, which is crazy to me, but it's happening. Um, that being said, Kansas City travels to Houston, take on the Can- the Texans, not the Can- not the Texans, Texans. And this is a huge. Apparently, every team that goes up against the Chiefs or the the the, the Texans. They are four, 14 point favorites. So that is two touchdown favorites um, because the Texans suck. And so uh, Andrew and I both take the Chiefs. Uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think the Texans are going to be able to do much against them. Um, the Arizona Cardinals uh, travel to Denver to take on the Broncos. The Broncos are three point favorites. Uh, Andrew has chosen the Cardinals. I've chosen the Broncos. I've chosen the Broncos because Kyler Murray is out with the Cardinals. And so Colt McCoy is in. So I think that the Broncos will have a field day defensively. I'm not saying anything about Russell Wilson. I think defensively, <coughs> I think that they'll be able to um, hurt the Cardinals uh, and, and be able to get some good points. Um, the New England Patriots travel to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders. The Raiders are one point favorites. Uh, but both Andrew and I are taking the Patriots. Um, I, I think I think the mentee versus the mentor um, will lose. Uh, I don't think Josh McDaniels will be able to get um, his team to win because how in the world do you let the L.A. Rams beat you? That's, that's it. With a dude who came off the plane two days before. That's beside the point. I just, you know, I just, whatever. Um, then our beloved Tennessee Titans – Take on the L.A. Chargers in Los Angeles. Um, Andrew has chosen the Titans. I have chosen the Chargers. Not because I hate the Titans. Obviously, they're my team. I love them very much. I want them to win. (coughs) I want to be wrong. But if the Titans cannot beat Jacksonville, I don't understand how they're going to be a 7-8, a 7-6 team like the Chargers who are playing for the playoffs we are trying to get into the playoffs and are on the bubble, okay? I don't understand how that's going to happen in Los Angeles. Will they be able to run? Yes, and that's the only way. The only way that the Titans have any chance is if they run, 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 run. That's it. And run some more. The Chargers are the three-point favorites in that. So, yeah, it's close, but I have to – I want my Titans to win, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable picking them. Um, with Sunday night football, uh, the New York Giants travel to Washington, D.C. to take on the Commanders. Um, this is flexed because this is flexed into Sunday night because of the implications for the playoffs. Um, the Commanders are 4.5 favorites. Both Andrew and I are choosing the Commanders. <coughs> Don't really have any good analysis as to why. It's not because of their cool name. Hmm, I can say that. Uh, then Monday Night Football, the Los Angeles Rams travel to Green Bay to take on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. The Packers are seven-point favorites. I don't know why Andrew chose the Rams. I have no idea. But he chose the Rams, and I'm choosing the Packers. I think it was a fluke accident. Uh, they beat the Raiders. I think the Raiders are very similar to the Titans, where a team that shouldn't beat you beats you. But I don't think the Rams have any gusto to be able to win against the Packers. So, that's why. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. I hope you were enlightened. I hope you had learned something uh, about the playoffs, about uh, (coughs) what could potentially happen, and also some of the goofiness with the points uh, as far as playing with those. Um, Good luck to everybody out there who are in the fantasy football playoffs, um, except for my brother. And the uh, in my other league, I got one more game, and then we're in the playoffs. So uh, shout out to um, Joshua in that league. I hope you lose because I need to beat you. That's it. Um, other than that, <coughs> <coughs> thank you.
That's it for me today. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Next week should be normal. Um, Lord willing, I don't have COVID uh, again. And uh, should be able to have Andrew back on to be able to talk about what ha- what happened uh, with this week's playoffs and what we think will happen in the future. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, please click the subscribe button, click the like button, click the bell. That way you're notified. Leave us a comment below. Let us know, did you make it into the playoffs for your fantasy football? Or your playoffs begin next week because there's only top four teams. If you're listening on your favorite podcasting app, please click the subscribe. Leave us a five-star review. Also letting us know what you think about this podcast. I'm Nick, in for Andrew. And as always, you have an open invitation to our conversation. Bye-bye.